guys, I think, inherently want to be big and dangerous. You don't want to be some small, quick, fast, lean boxer. You want to be able to throw hands and also be that big guy that's impressive to look at. So I've put together exactly how you would schedule your training, what you need to eat, how you need to train martial arts, how you need to body build, so that this is a possibility. Because when you train bodybuilding and you're on that bulk consistently, you become big, you become muscular, but you become slow. So when you then go in the the boxing ring and you start sparring again and you start doing pad work you're like fuck I'm out of breath my punches are so slow you've got these tiny little guys running around you and they're able to land three punches for every one that you throw now when you go into boxing you find yourself shredding all your weight your muscles come off but you end up this fast lean boxer so when you're wearing your clothes and you're not topless you don't look very impressive so how do we find that happy medium without overtraining, without doing too much of both of them. Now, what I actually mean when I say overtraining is suboptimal conditions for muscle growth due to inadequate rest and recovery. I actually came up with that earlier. That was a definition for my own brain. So I'm a genius, effectively. But to get to a point where you're that big guy, you can't be training, running marathons every day, doing all this cardio boxing, sparring, all of this day in, day out, you are just going to stay lean if you do that. You're going to stay small. If you want to add that size, if you want to remain a big guy and you also want to be able to fight, you need to calm down a little bit. You can't be going too crazy. Just because you can train like an animal every day doesn't mean you should if you want to gain the maximum amount of muscle. Now, this is how I structure my weight training. So I do three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, an hour and 15 minute sessions maximum. And I do the Gorilla full body program from the course. So if you guys are interested in that, it's in the link below. There's four programs included with the course, all 12 weeks long. You can check them out below. But what I do is I focus on my heaviest sets first. So I'll make sure that I'm consistently gaining strength across the key lifts because I'm only training three times a week. Full body is most effective because I can work all of my body parts at once, meaning that I'm stimulating the muscle three times a week rather than just once per muscle group. And I focus on strength gains across the key lifts. So my squat, my deadlift, bent over rows, shoulder press, chest press. And I make sure that each week I'm getting stronger on my first lift. So it's just your standard progressive overload on training, but you're only training full body three times a week. And the hack I have for every workout is to add 100 burpees to increase your fighting cardio. Because I think what you find is when you are lifting a lot of weights, and especially when you're training like this, which isn't optimal for going in the ring, you wanna be adding these 100 burpees just to keep track of your cardio. Now, this is how I schedule in my martial arts training. So just a side note, if you wanna be a pro fighter or you wanna compete in the ring, it's quite dangerous. So you do not want to be doing bodybuilding three times a week. You want to be doing functional training to help with explosive power. This is for people that are not really thinking of competing competitively at a pro level or an amateur boxing level or anything like that. They just want to be able to throw a punch, be kind of dangerous, good at sparring, but a big guy at the same time. So if you want to be that big guy that can protect himself and others, I think you need at least two hours of technique, pads, drills, bag work per week and one hour of full sparring. My structure is on Tuesdays, I do a one hour session, which is mostly pads, drills, bag work. And then Saturday is a one hour technique session again, but it's followed by an hour of sparring. I think these three hours a week, especially if you're getting that hour worth of sparring in, is enough to become a dangerous guy, to become better than 95% of guys that are walking the street and you'll be big and you'll hold on to muscle at the same time. Now that you've got the training scheduled down, this is without a doubt the most important part when it comes to building muscle and keeping that weight on when you are gonna be training these martial arts. The problem is that martial arts burn a ridiculous amount of calories. So you need to figure out what's your basal metabolic rate, you need to add your active calories. So how many calories are you burning in the day doing your job plus the martial arts and the fitness training and figure out how many calories you've burned in that day. So for me, I've an incredibly high metabolism. If I'm on a Muay Thai day, my two hour sparring session, I can burn upwards of four and a half thousand calories that day, maybe five, five and a half thousand calories, meaning I need to eat four and a half thousand calories just to stay the same way. So if you introduce two or three times a week Muay Thai training on top of your current workout program and you do not massively increase your calories, you are going to lose weight like never before. You are going to shred fat, but also you're gonna shred muscle if there's no fat to lose. So what you need to do is introduce feast days. So after training, you introduce a feast where you, you eat a huge amount of steak, of carbs, of fats, nuts, butter, egg, dairy, all that sort of stuff, mostly clean, but you can have some dirty food in there as well to get in two, three, four thousand calories in one feast. 
to get all of that into your body because otherwise you are just fighting an uphill battle when it comes to keeping that weight on and keeping the calories coming in. And it can be part of your routine. You do your sparring on Saturday, you've had a great time, and then you and the boys, you go grab a huge meal somewhere and you get your steaks in and your burgers and stuff and you have that feast together like gladiators. So I think it's a really nice concept and it will help you keep that weight on. It will help you become a big guy and I think it's quite a nice ritual to have when you go away and you do that spar and you do that fighting, you all get together and you eat together afterwards like kings. I think it's a great way to do your diet and nutrition. On your days off, the two days that you're not training, you can take it a little easier on the calories if you find it hard to eat. But on those training days, you really need to be up in your carbs, your fats, your proteins, everything, getting that in so that you're not gonna be losing all of that weight when you, when you are burning so many calories. Rest and recovery is also so important. Following the above schedule, you're gonna be training five times a week. You need eight hours sleep per night minimum. That, that alone, if you're currently getting five or six hours and then you start getting eight hours sleep, you'll just find your body keeping hold of so much more muscle. There was a study I read about from the Oxford Journal or whatever peer-reviewed studies they do, and they had a group of subjects that were trying to lose weight. And all they did was they gave them the same diet with a calorie deficit and they gave them the same training plan, but one group got to sleep one hour less per night and the other group got to sleep an hour more. Now at the end of the 30 days, they had both, both groups had lost the same amount of weight, but the group that had less sleep had lost 85 or 90% of their weight from muscle mass compared to fat of the other group. So if you wanna start losing fat rather than your hard gained muscle, you need to sleep more. It was so, so important. Also on the two days rest, I would recommend two yoga sessions. When you are lifting like this, getting stronger and stronger, you're fighting, your body's gonna start to ache, it's gonna start to hurt. You need to look after it. And I would also recommend getting in the sauna followed by the ice bath. It's just gonna flush out all of those toxins in the body. It's gonna allow your muscles to recover far, far better. It's gonna release heat shock proteins. It's gonna release cold shock proteins. And all in all, it's gonna to lead to much better muscle recovery and greater feelings of well-being in general. Now, in total, boys, you are spending nine hours and 45 minutes per week on your health. You will literally destroy men who spend 20 hours a week in the gym or running or cycling just using this program. It's an investment you absolutely need to make and that is how I would recommend you would mix together bodybuilding and martial arts to stay big and dangerous at the same time. I hope you enjoyed it, boys. If you wanna join the tribe, you wanna to speak to other guys about how they do it in our clan, we have a WhatsApp group. You get added to that when you get the course. Check that out in the link below. But apart from that, boys, I'll see you on the next one. Whoop out!